Free the ACP ties through our Shield EZ here with our 3.6 8-inch barrel. And what we have today is our Underwood ammunition, and this is their standalone hollow point. I've had requests to test this before, and from what I understand, Underwood makes this hollow point. Maybe they don't. And maybe some people out there can uh, give me more information on it. But from what I can find on it is it's not an Osler, it's not an XTP, it's nothing like that. And they just list it as their jacket of hollow point. It's a very interesting design because the jacket kind of crimps over the top of, of the nose pretty far. Just very interesting the way it's designed. And as a 90 grain, today what I'm going to test is our standard pressure versus our plus P. So our standard pressure is a 90 grain jacket of hollow point rated at 1,025 feet per second. Our plus P is also the same 90 grain bullet rated at 1,200 feet per second. So a lot higher rated velocity. So I'll be interested to see if that extra velocity will make any difference on that bullet. So we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test. So we're just going to shoot into plain clear ballistics, see what the best potential is of those bullet designs, see what kind of penetration we get, what kind of expansion, all of that. And after taking a shot like that, I'm going to put on on four layers of fabric on the front of this three inches here that represents a pectoral muscle and after that we're gonna have a quarter inch medium density fiber board that's gonna represent our ribs or sternum and that'll be more of our real world simulation test and after that I'm gonna shoot up my steel silhouette to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these see if there's a difference between that plus P and standard presser for shootability so let's get started with this test all right, first up, we have our standard pressure here. I did mark the plus P so I don't get them confused uh, with the standard pressure. So I marked every plus P round. Uh, the standard pressure, 90 grain rated at 1,025 feet per second. Let's see how close we get to 1,025 feet per second. Ten forty one. Ten sixty two. Thousand seven. 1,042, 9.96. So my point of impact is shifted a little bit to the left with that particular round. And we got about rated velocity overall. Let's see what we get with our plus P version here. 1204, 1184, 1228. 1151, 1201, so pretty close to the rate of velocity and actually impacting a little bit different on target, a little bit more centered but low. So both of these were about rated velocity. So let's set our ballistics gel block with these and see how they compare. All right, in my magazine, I got uh, first the standard pressure, then a plus P. So we'll go through our best potential and see how these compare. So plain gel, best potential, standard pressure. Here's our plus P. Let's go take a look. All right, so wow. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely got under penetration there, but we got full expansion with both of them. It looks like our plus P has expanded greater. A lot of sunshine coming through this block, so it might be kind of hard to see. But what we're looking at with our standard pressure is 11 and a half inches of penetration. With our plus P, we're right at about 10 and a quarter inches. So big difference there for our for our you know penetration. And well, not really a huge difference for penetration, but considering that one's almost hitting our minimum we want to see of 12 inches and one is kind of far away that's kind of a big difference there definitely more impact force and damage in the gel with our plus p version so hopefully when we put out our mdf and our denim we'll bring that expansion down just enough to have adequate penetration so let's do that all right more of our real world simulation we're going to go through four layers of sweatshirt three inches of clear ballistics to represent our pectoral muscle a quarter inch mdf to represent our ribs or sternum and we'll see how these compare that way so first up we have our standard pressure let's see what this does all right let's hit it with our plus p now let's go take a look
All right, so yeah, we can see from that 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 velocity difference made a big difference because we hit our MDF with both of those. And we can see right here that obviously our standard pressure was and plain gel was starting to expand after hitting this as where this is hitting with enough velocity with our plus P to expand before that. Plus P massive hole, our standard pressure, not so much. And that kind of makes me wonder though, when I see stuff like that, maybe that's a fluke. So I think I'm gonna run one more here, but what we're looking at here with our plus P is even through our MDF, we got even less penetration of about eight and three quarter inches with our standard pressure, we didn't get expansion, but we got 17 inches of penetration. Let me run, like, with our plus P, we know that would happen again. Because that's full expansion. You, you're not going to, you know, you're, you're hitting high velocity to do that. What might come into play here, though, is maybe this was a fluke with our standard pressure. So let me run one more with our standard pressure and see if we get that same result. All right, standard pressure. One more impact here. See what we got. Take a look. And while we got a little bit different penetration, yeah, we got pretty much the same result there. As we can see here, our standard pressures are plus P. So it's kind of like, at least in this pistol anyway, it's kind of like the plus P is going too fast and the standard pressure is going too slow and I'll, if i were to pull out my lcp here and i don't like to bring that out anymore because it malfunctions and people go on and on about how their lcp never does get to the end of conversation well they they only run ball so the fact that they're trolling me over the fact that mine jams with like plus p hollow points is kind of a moot point but i like to avoid that in general but anyways you know what we're seeing here is i think that we're a little bit too hot at least with this pistol with that plus P and a little bit too weak with our standard pressure. If I had to pick one of these though, I'm gonna pick the standard pressure because as impressive as that extra expansion is, you know, our, our penetration is what matters. And with the second shot here, you know, we're right at about 15 inches. So I would take that standard pressure over that plus P just in the fact that it's going to penetrate adequately for self-defense. Now, if I had to shoot stuff like rodents and raccoons and something, I'd probably use that plus P to do a better job. But for self-defense, where we want minimum penetration, I'm going to use the standard pressure. But none of this really matters if I can't hit the target with these, though. So I want to see what kind of shootability I can get with these, see if the plus P is shootable compared to the standard pressure and so on. So let me see what I get with these for practical accuracy. All right, I'm 12 yards from the target. I just want to do some practical shootability. So I'm going to get my sights on target with a few rounds here. Once I get a good sight picture, I'll pop off what I have in the gun. Just three rounds for each of these just to test from 12 yards and see what we get. So here's our standard pressure. Did pull one kind of low there. And these are shooting actually better on paper. So let's see how they do at steel. 12 yards. And they were hitting more center, it looked like, but malfunction here. And this has been a very reliable pistol. The only time I've ever had a malfunction with this is one time in the past with Underwood Plus P. And we're seeing that again here. Underwood Plus P. Go for a headshot, see how accurate this is. A lot of recoil, it hits pretty hard. Let me back up a little bit. All right, 25 yards, same test. Three rounds on target, see what I can get with the standard pressure here. All right. Now let me try that plus P here. See how that compares. All right. Let me paint that up and back up further. All right, 75 yards from the target. You know, sometimes I get a lot of misunderstandings about why I do this. People imagine that somehow I'm training. This is my normal training for like if somebody pull a knife at me and from 225 feet away, which is 75 yards, I'm firing self-defense and I'm going to go to prison and all this stuff. That's not why I do this. I do this for three reasons. One, it helps me tell, you know, something about the ammo because 
if an ammo is truly accurate, it retains the accuracy at distance. That tells me something. Number two, it's fun <laughs> and it's, it's a challenge and it's fun to do and I like to challenge myself. And number three, there are really off situations where you do have to engage a threat at distances like that, like a mass shooter across the parking lot, shooting people, nobody is stopping them. Well, if you're carrying, you better at least try. You know what I'm saying? So there, there's always a purpose to, to shoot from distance with handguns. So standard pressure. Let's see if I can make any hits with this stuff. So it's shooting a little bit to the left for me at close range. Looks like it hit center right where I was aiming. All right, that stuff had such low recoil that I was not thrown off really at all. Any misses were certainly not due to anticipating recoil. So that was nice. Plus P version. See how this sets for me. I feel like it hits faster. So this is the same thing that happened last time. On the very last round, it malfunctioned. And I think that that is, it's just that this is a pretty light pistol. And once you remove most of that weight with those rounds, now you're at a position where it's just too much recoil. All right, so, missed that last shot there. What I'm seeing here, and it's pretty clear, that the standard pressure would be my choice between the two of these for multiple reasons, mostly because at those last rounds, it's malfunctioning. And that's not me limp wristing and people are going to get on here, don't do it, and say, oh, I've never had a malfunction in my life with that pistol. And I'll get into a conversation with them. They've only ever shot Winchester white box in their life. <laughs> and they're trolling me for that happening. But nonetheless here. Let's get that out of the way. I just get that stress out of the way. Uh, defend myself once in a while verbally here. Uh, but what I'm seeing here is that with our plus P malfunctions, that's not good. You know, ran that last round there. Doesn't matter. It's the last round. That's still not good. Um, and we're getting way too much expansion. It's just pushed a little bit too fast for this particular pistol. So it's over expanding. That's not to say it wouldn't work. If you're making a straight on shot, what you're looking at is then clear ballistics, you know, which is half as dense as real flesh, roughly. What you want to see is, you know, for the front on shot, yeah, you're only going to need probably seven, eight inches in clear ballistics penetration, which that got. However, the only old FBI statistics of minimum of 12 inches is taking shots from the side, going through the arm going through the thoracic cavity and still being able to hit something vital. And when you're looking at penetrations like that, it's not going to happen. It's going to go through your arm, probably barely go into the skin of the thoracic cavity, not stop a threat. But when we have that uh, standard pressure, which in our real world, world, real world simulation wouldn't really expand, it would plow through and it probably actually works. So overall our standard pressure it seemed like a pretty good round because it was balanced pretty well for what we were seeing you know typical performance for 380 acp where we're not really getting any expansion through our mdf and fabric but we are in plain gel pretty typical but that's kind of where 380 needs to be our plus p plus p can be good with the right bullet but this is not the right bullet to push that fast I suspect in my LCP or in pistols with like less than a three inch barrel, that plus P would probably be perfect where it's going to expand properly and get good penetration, more of controlled expansion. But 
you probably have to deal with potential uh, malfunctions as well with that. So that's what you get today. I'm gonna say this bullet seemed okay. You know, it wasn't a cheap bullet. It looks like it does perform, it does expand. It's just, you know, the velocities need tweaked here a little bit. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.